I'm going to be meeting with Daniel Bassel and Simon Ensar this morning. And uh, Daniel created this... Uh, I, I'm kind of gobsmacked. It's kind of a universe from his own life. Uh, Daniel basically has been doing one thing over the last 40 years. Um, and that is to bring teacher mentor programs to uh, youth in high poverty uh, areas of Chicago. And that kind of single-minded and perhaps even bloody-minded dedication is uh, something that is inspiring and thrilling. And so I'm, I'm going to look over the site that he's created this morning. Or it's not this site, this blog post. This uh, rhizome of sorts. And, you know, if anybody in the in the, group, the rhizomatic learning group wants to see what a rhizome looks like, well, here it is. And it's steady growth over X number of years. Um, so, I just want to look at some of this. Uh, kind of sc you scroll down the page and... Okay, it's rather astonishing how much worthwhile stuff has been gathered together here. Um, and I think one of the neat things that Daniel shows us here is that <clears throat> if you're focused and you continue to uh, rework the ground that you are on and, or like Candide says you just work in your garden uh, this is this is what it gets now this right here is I consider it to be a crime so somebody needs to post a comment here if you don't do it I will it's because this is a monument to uh, perseverance and intelligence that is a model for anyone. Uh, you know, this just the social ne uh, network analysis and mapping articles are are inspiring. They've inspired me, and I've only dipped into these. Uh, I think Daniel is always trying to model uh, the behavior of a tutor of a tutor uh, in the tutor mentor relationship. And he's always, he's, he doesn't just take the tutor side, he takes, I mean, the, the, uh, the yeah, the tutor side, he, he takes the mentor side as well. He's always willing to learn. That's such an incredible attitude to have, um, especially if you've worked on one thing all your life, to continue to learn from others and to voraciously pull in from other disciplines, which is basically... What we see here is, is just, it's just a constant pulling in of resources and ideas and concepts and ways of doing from other disciplines um, and technology. Just, you know, if, if anything, this is a history of technology use in the service of one thing. That's one way you can view this. Um, as you see right here, he has a whole section on technology and cool tools. Um, and, you know, his, his history here is incredible. Um, how many people he's touched must be astonishing. And continues to do so. And in the face of, of um, what has to be uh, for any volunteer group, any nonprofit group, um, a bit of a nightmare for economically, and um, uh, humanly, 
um, trying to get people involved and to carry through. Um, and he just keeps on laying out his vision um, in different ways and hoping that if it doesn't catch you one way, it catches you another way. Um, in a way, I think Daniel is the one of the greatest salespeople I've ever known. Um, and that, uh, you know, he, I I suspect there's a there's a bit of the uh, a notch in the belt theory of um, of influencing people to buy in uh, to a particular uh, idea or concept or uh, design. And that notch in the belt theory is pretty simple. Uh, when you're selling something, you have to you have to keep coming back to to your customer. Uh, I had this experience many, many times when I was when I ran my own business, my own cleaning, chimney cleaning and repair business for ten years before I became a teacher. And um, I never sold anything that I didn't believe in because it was just too hard. And besides, if I sold something I didn't believe in, it invariably failed or pro proved to be uh, less than adequate as a product. And I didn't do that very often because I learned pretty quickly that just, just selling stuff was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to sell stuff that served people. So I... When I finally found good products uh, that solved problems, I would um, sell them to my customers, and I would, you know, I would make an initial sales pitch, uh, make an argument for, say, a new, you know, waterproofing the crown of their chimney, because around my part of the country, there's so many freeze thaw cycles. Every chimney crown is essentially in a state of being broken, disrepair. Waterproofing it, you know, really does extend the life of the chimney. So I'd sell people on the idea of waterproofing. First time, no. Second year, uh, you know, I'd bring them down a little Polaroid picture. This was back in that time where Polaroids were actually a pretty decent business tool. And then maybe, maybe not, you know, it might take three or four times to show them that first off I was serious, second off that I was, had their interest in, in mind, and each one of those was just another notch in the bed, okay, no good for you this year, I'll come back next year. And I sensed that Daniel, and eventually I'd sell stuff, I'd sell lots of stuff, and it was all worthy stuff, stuff that I, that I could uh, uh, in all good conscience sell to people. And I, I feel like Daniel is the same way. You know, okay, uh, I can show you a vision vision map. I can um, go to your site and comment and see how show you how what you're doing fits in with what I'm doing. It's uh, it's a rather protean strategy. You know, Daniel is a very protean person. I can see this just from this particular uh, website, and <clears throat> it's not the kind of website that you're ever going to get all the way through. And it's a it's a uh, it's really a map of uh, a single person's attempt to solve a problem, to come to terms with uh, poverty and learning, uh, to help somebody. And in that, it is profound, worthy of many looks, and I plan on dipping in on a regular basis. But I thought that maybe if I just did a little screencast here to show you just the potency of this. I mean, just incredible. Look at this. Look at these fascinating labels that he's got over here. You know, benchmarking. Um, collaboration, collective action, commitment. Um, disaster. 
Grove Cities belong to DL MOOC um, Emergence. And that's really just part of his platform that he uses uh, here, Blogger. Uh, links and connections. Um, and when you start going back to 2005 on Blogger, well, you're a long time user. And uh, and I really do, I really, I mean, admire is not, is just way too pale a word to describe how I feel about um, the, the work that Daniel has done. So um, I'm really looking forward to talking with him on the Hangout and picking his brain on, you know, what it means to be uh, part of a tutor-mentor relationship. Here's to you, Daniel.